Hello everybody, we're going to walk through a two-stage growth rate example in terms of how to value a dividend-paying firm uh, and instead of just using the simple constant growth rate model that uh, I'm sure many of you have seen in the textbook, we're going to use uh, a somewhat level up here using a two-stage uh, growth model where the growth of the firm is going to now change over time. So this can go up, this can go down, it depends on, on the firm, but we're going to walk through this example here. And there's also other multiple uh, multi-stage growth rate examples that uh, firms can go through. There's not just two stages, they can go through multiple three, four, five, six, uh, etc. through up, uh, up there. So here's a two-stage growth model example. We already have some inputs within uh, the Excel spreadsheet. So we have initial earnings of five dollars. Initial dividend is three fifty. Stage one growth is going to be twelve percent. The duration of that growth, how long that's going to last, is approximately fifteen years. Um, the estimated growth rate going forward after that fifteen years period is about ten percent. So remember, the growth rates come in in decimal formats here. So cell B six and B eight, you can see this is decimal formats. Uh, the beta coefficient for this firm or this company is approximately 1.45. The T-bill rate is assumed at 2% in this example, and the market risk premium uh, is assumed to be 8%. So we'll get into doing some calculations uh, now that we need from cells B13 all the way down to uh, B27. So I have to throw in a couple different uh, formulas here. And so the required rate of return uh, is obviously required even for the simple uh, constant dividend growth model. We're going to need that also here for this two-stage model. So we can calculate that by taking uh, the T-bill rate uh, plus uh, the beta coefficient of the firm, oh, it looks like they got two in there, plus the beta coefficient of the firm uh, multiplied by the market risk premium. Okay, and I'm just going to throw brackets around here, I forgot to do that. So if I throw brackets around there, the required rate of return for this company uh, with these metrics here is approximately uh, just shy of 14%. So. What I'll do here is I'll just uh, open this up for you guys so you can see the uh, actual formula as it comes out. There you go. So now the ratio uh, of the, the growth rate over the required rate of return, we're going to take 1 plus uh, the growth rate here divided by 1 plus uh, the required rate of return. This is going to give us this shy of 1, uh, so 0.985. Okay, so the next step here along the lines is a little bit of a technical step. Uh, this is going to be what we refer to as closed-end solution. So the cell is, uh, is a closed-end solution to the summation of the first stage of at, at the growth rate and the required rate of return. So I'm going to kind of use this step uh, to, to simplify some of the additional steps we have to go through in cells B17 and, and downward. So this solution allows for any duration of the growth to be estimated uh, without building the years of cash flow uh, earlier. Okay, so let's walk through the formula for this. Uh, the formula is going to equal uh, if, open parentheses, uh, we go to the ratio that we just calculated. So if that equals one, comma, this is gonna go to the duration, so B7, okay, so the duration, uh, comma, open parentheses, uh, back to this ratio, okay, minus open parentheses, open parentheses, back to the ratio, uh, close parentheses, and we're gonna lift that to the power of uh, the duration of the growth, so uh, B7, we're going to close that parentheses, and then we're going to multiply that by, again, the ratio, and uh, we're going to close the parentheses, divided by, open parentheses, 1 minus, and guess what, yes, back to this ratio that we calculated. So we close that, we hit enter, and this is going to give us a value of 13 uh, 0.41603. So if we drop this down, you guys will be able to see the formulas that come out there. So this is going to help us here 
uh, coming down into calculating what the present value of the stage one dividends, present value of the cost and growth dividends, and then hence the value of uh, the common stock. Okay, so here we're going to use that cell that we just calculated in B15. So this is going to equal B15, so that uh, that closed end we just calculated, multiplied by uh, the initial dividend. Okay, so that's going to give us just shy of $47. So what we'll do here is just drop this formula button down uh, for you guys to see that formula of, of the uh, of the stage one uh, dividends there. So the next step is the present value of the constant growth dividends. Okay, so this is going to equal uh, open parentheses uh, B five. Okay, so that's the initial dividend uh, multiplied by one plus the stage one growth rate close parentheses to the power of the duration of the growth okay so then that's going to be uh, multiplied by uh, open parentheses one plus uh, back to the uh, estimated constant growth rate going forward close parentheses close parentheses divided by open parentheses uh, b13 that's going to be the required rate of return minus uh, the estimated constant growth rate, close parentheses, multiplied by open parentheses, open parentheses, one minus uh, the required rate of return, close parentheses, to the power of uh, duration growth. So that's power of 15, close parentheses, close parentheses. And you're going to get the present value of the constant growth dividend. So after that stage one, uh, level okay so when we have you know pre post we simply just going to take uh, b17 here so that's going to be uh, the present value of stage one's dividends plus uh, the constant growth dividends going forward it's going to give you a stock price an estimated stock price uh, of just uh, just about 112 dollars okay so with those metrics uh, you could estimate hey I'm, I'm willing to pay uh, close to 112 dollars for that Okay, so that's that's the uh, that's the estimating the value of the stock there with those inputs. Okay, so two stage growth model, and again, like I said, there you can have multiple stage growth. We'll, we'll go over another video in 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 the future there, maybe three stages uh, and multi stage periods beyond the two stage growth model. So now the analysis for growth opportunities. Okay, so we have a couple uh, two different cells here we can fill in. So the value of a non growth firm. So this is going to equal. Oops, Hit uh, back here. So the value of a non-growth firm. Okay, I don't know why it's going there. Undo. Thank you. Okay, so back here. The value of a non-growth firm. This is going to equal uh, the initial uh, earnings a firm has divided by the required rate of return. Okay, so pretty simple estimation. That's the value of a no-growth firm. Okay, so approximately thirty-seven dollars. Uh, the present value of growth opportunities. So this is going to equal the present the value of the stock uh, minus uh, the value of a no growth firm. Okay, so present value of the growth opportunities going to be the difference between the present the value of the stock and the value of a no growth firm. This can approximately equal forty-seven dollars. So you can see where you know we're valuing the company here in no growth and with the growth opportunities. So then the PE ratio, we're going to go down here to some you know some valuation ratios. Uh, everybody should be somewhat familiar with these already uh, within the class. So this is simply going to equal uh, the value of the stock divided by uh, the initial earnings. Okay, and that's going to give you uh, a price, uh, a P-E ratio of approximately about 17. Okay, and then the price uh, ratio with next year's expected earnings, that's simply going to be uh, the value of the stock here, divided by, and then we're going to take uh, the initial earnings, so that, uh, that $5 we just used, multiply that by open parentheses one plus uh, the stage one growth right so it's going to grow by 12% we're going to add that add that within there 
Yes, I want to accept that correction. So the P ratio for next year's earnings is approximately $15. Okay, so we have a couple valuation metrics we can see there. So that's an example of uh, of looking at uh, a two-stage growth model, trying to evaluate the value of the company. We can see here we have the value of a note growth firm, the value of those growth opportunities. We can see how that corresponds back to the value of the stock. And that's kind of how you walk through it with those inputs within Excel. Now, one thing you want to do, you might want to do some sensitivity analysis, right? You know, what's the impact uh, if the, the, the growth rate within the first stage or the, the, the constant growth rate changes or how long is that duration of growth going forward? What if that changes? Because we made some assumptions in there, right? We made assumptions here is the duration of the first year growth is going to be 15, uh, you know, the growth rate during that time is going to be approximately 12 percent well, what if that changes that's going to you know change obviously some of these metrics that we changed down here so if we scroll over here uh, you're going to see that i have a couple tables set up already where you know this is going to be the stock price we're going to look at this is going to be how the the next year's p ratio changes dependent upon how long the duration of the first stage growth lasts whether it really lasts for five years maybe it lasts for much longer than that and what that first stage growth rate is. Remember, we estimated that it's going to be 12. Here you can see I've set up a table here uh, with, you know, a 10% growth rate all the way up to a 14 uh, and, and corresponding down here as this relates to the price earnings ratio. Um, you got So if you set this cell up, uh, if you set it up like this, you have to bring in uh, the current stock price uh, to this cell. So you can see here, uh, cell E6 is linked over here to the value of the stock, uh, and cell uh, E21 is linked down here to the PE ratio. Okay, so you can see how that corresponds. If you get this set up uh, as such, you can simply uh, highlight these cells, and you can draw this out as far as you want. You can kind of mix and match some of these things you can go to uh, what if analysis go to the data table and then within the data table here this is where you're going to be able to uh, you know play around and, and, and change some of these row and column tables so in the row uh, input cell uh, you're going to want to link this uh, to the growth rate okay so you're going to want to link this to the growth rate and in the column cell you're going to want to link this to the duration Okay, and if we hit OK there, you're going to see uh, that this populates a table in which we can kind of analyze. We can quickly calculate if it's, if it's done right because we can simply go, well, we put a 12% growth rate in in 15 years. We can go to this growth rate table and say, look, okay, here's the 12% growth rate for a duration of 15 years. It estimates the stock price. Okay, so it estimates the stock price is going to be 83.72. Well, yeah, that corresponds to what we just calculated. But if we go through here, we can see that, you know, if the first stage growth rate exceeds 12 uh, and, you know, maybe is is at that still 15-year duration period, you can see that, you know, the estimation of the value of the stock will be, will be higher. Okay, so that's what this table does depending on, you know, the, the, the growth rate from 10% to 14%. And the duration of that first year growth rate, as that changes, obviously, this table is going to correspond to the, to the valuation of, of, of those different uh, assets there. So that's a little bit of a sensitivity analysis. And you can do the same thing for uh, the P-E ratio, right? So if we go back up here to what if analysis data table, uh, the row input cell, again, is going to be the growth rate, okay? And the column row is going to be the duration throw that in there and again we hit OK we can see again uh, if we correspond just a quick double check we can see that at a 12% growth rate at 15 years right this cell here corresponds back to what we calculated uh, for that is 14.95% but you can see as the growth rate changes and the duration of growth may change we can kind of see the sensitivity analysis of how that's going to impact next year's uh, expected earnings okay so
It's a quick uh, analysis of, uh, you know, looking at a two-stage growth model. Um, like I said, you can go into multi-stage growth models outside of just a two-period stage. It gets a little bit uh, more complex, but remember, again, most companies aren't going to be growing at a constant rate, so it's important to kind of evaluate companies on, on a more realistic measure. So if you have any comments, just throw them in the comment box below. If you're in class, uh, I'll be happy to uh, to answer any questions that you have. Thanks for watching.